Hello, my name is Nick, and in this video we're going to look at CPAP, a continuous positive airway pressure, and non-invasive ventilation, also known as BIFPAP, biphasic positive airway pressure. CPAP is a way of keeping the pressure positive in a spontaneously breathing patient's lungs. This positive pressure helps keep the smaller airways and alveoli open, which allows for additional gas exchange to take place by recruiting areas of a lung that might otherwise have collapsed down. A tight mask is applied to the patient's face to create a seal. Air and oxygen now flow through a circuit attached to the mask at high flow. The patient exhales through a valve which closes when the desired pressure is achieved. This pressure created by the valve is known as PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure. It's this that leaves the pressure in the patient's lungs at the end of expiration. There are several type fitting masks that can be used. Oral masks, naso masks, full face masks and CPAP hoods. CPAP has been shown to be particularly useful in acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema and congestive heart failure, where in simple terms, the positive pressure created helps push the fluid out of the lungs and into the circulation and prevents further fluid coming back into the lungs. It could also be used for pneumonia, sleep apnea and atelectasis. So what is non-invasive ventilation? Sometimes, just keeping the alveoli open isn't enough, especially if the patient develops type 2 respiratory failure and starts to retain carbon dioxide. Think of non-invasive ventilation as CPAP with added zing. Non-invasive ventilation is used to increase the size of each breath taken by the patient. It gives an assisted push behind the breath which increases its size and thus reduces carbon dioxide levels by blowing off CO2. It seems to be most useful in conditions such as exacerbation of COPD and post-extubation on ITU. Some success has been reported with asthma patients as well as certain other respiratory conditions where there may be a reluctance to sedate, intubate and ventilate a patient due to existing risk factors. So how does an invasive ventilation work? As with CPAP, a tight-fitting mask is uh, fitted to the patient's face, but this time the patient breathes through a mechanical ventilator. On the ventilator, two pressures are set. Firstly, the positive end expiratory pressure, PEEP, similar to that used in CPAP, as before, this pressure helps preventing the alveolo from collapsing. Secondly, the pressure that creates the push. This is the inspiratory pressure, which increases the size of each breath or tidal volume. The bigger the pressure, the bigger the push, the bigger the tidal volume. So let's assume that we set the PEEP at 10 centimetres of water. The pressure in the patient's lungs will not drop below this level. It's now the baseline pressure, if you like. Now assume we set the inspiratory pressure at 15 centimetres of water. Note that the inspiratory pressure is added on top of the PEEP. As the patient takes the breath, it causes the ventilator to initiate. It now increases the pressure until the inspiratory pressure is achieved. Once the inspiratory pressure has been reached, the expiratory valve opens, the pressure begins to fall, and the patient exhales passively until the pressure drops back to the PEEP level, where the valve closes to maintain the pressure. The inspiratory pressure can be adjusted until the desired tidal volume has been achieved, usually about 6 to 8 mils per kilogram. In addition to the pressures in both non-invasive ventilation and CPAP, oxygen levels must be set. For various reasons, this is frequently referred to as the FiO2, or fraction of inspired oxygen. The FiO2 is expressed as a fraction, so that 100% oxygen is expressed as an FiO2 of 1, and 21% oxygen is expressed as an FiO2 of 0.21. So, to summarise, CPAP uses high flow and positive pressure at the end of expiration to keep the alveoli open and improves oxygenation. Non-invasive ventilation gives a push behind each breath to increase the size of the tidal volume, which in turn lowers carbon dioxide levels. So that's it, a very basic overview of CPAP and non-invasive ventilation in under five minutes.